I'm here with uh, Dijon Thompson, um, and thanks so much uh, for taking time out of your day today to answer a couple questions. Big UCLA fan, uh, watch you, uh, you know, going through your career at UCLA. Um, what were some of your favorite uh, memories or uh, uh, moments at, at UCLA? Um, favorite moments would probably be uh, my freshman year, um, playing in the tournament as a true freshman, uh, beating Cincinnati. They was the number one seed um, uh, in Pittsburgh. That was one, probably one of my favorites. And then... Uh, my senior year, probably one of my best years, uh, going uh, 39 points against Arizona State. So, yeah, it was just a couple memories, but it, it, I, I had a whole bunch of memories, but those are two that, you know, stand up on top of my head. Uh, after that, going into the NBA, uh, getting drafted by the Knicks, uh, going and playing in Phoenix, and uh, what kind of memories did you have there? Going through the draft process, it was... It was one of those frustrating processes, uh, long, draining, um, slipping that far down the draft. It was, you know, a little emotional because it was almost to the point of, like, I, I almost didn't get drafted, you know, especially after the type of year that I had. But uh, I, was, I was fortunate to get uh, drafted through the Knicks, and I was going to be excited because um, I was going to be playing with Trevor again, one of my good friends. And uh, he was there with the Knicks at the time, but was immediately traded to Phoenix. And again, I was uh, definitely excited about that because uh, that way I was uh, closer to home, playing in a system that you know that you know would help thrive for uh, for, my, uh, for my position playing with D'Antoni. So uh, I was excited. Uh, just 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 being drafted uh, enough was enough for me, and um, I just took it from there, really. And then uh, I gotta ask you. Uh, this summer, you played in the Drew League, and uh, that video kind of went out on YouTube uh, about you dunking on, on Nick Young. Could you tell me a little bit about that dunk and just what you're thinking? And I mean, it was a pretty uh, monster dunk. Yeah, it's, it's been a while since I've had, had one of those. Um, it kind of just, I don't I can't really explain uh, how it actually happened. I just remember just catching the ball and just taking one dribble and just going up for the dunk. I mean, I didn't care who was under there, really. Um, my body wasn't feeling, you know, too great, so I was just like, ah, let me just try it. I mean, if I'm getting fouled, I get fouled. If I make it, I make it. But, you know, I seen Nick down there, and it made it even better, uh, you know, being a Trojan and you being a Bruin, that, that made it even sweeter. And uh, just as, you know, just as goofy as he is laughing and stuff, <laughs> he just laughed it off and, you know, played a good sport, which which kind of downed my dunk. But, you know, it was, it was still a good dunk in a way, and, uh, I kind of shocked myself, to be honest. What are you up to these days, playing ball overseas? Yeah, I've, I've been overseas for the past uh, five years. Uh, after I left Phoenix, uh, I had my I had my first uh, surgery. I had knee surgery with Phoenix. Mm -hmm. I had a microfracture surgery, so that kind of um, that kind of hurt hurt the NBA because the following year I played the, the D League, played really well in the D League. Uh, got called up to Atlanta. Mm -hmm. and was there for two weeks. And uh, after that, uh, I just kind of got just, just a little frustrated and tired and just, just went to go make some guaranteed money in Europe. So I pretty much stayed over there the whole time and been over there this whole time, just making guaranteed money, just getting established in the Europe game and, uh, and playing pretty well in Europe. Uh, currently, uh, last season, I was in Russia playing. Uh, that's my second year playing in Russia, not consecutive, but uh, that was my second year playing in the Russian league. And I uh, had a really good year. Uh, especially coming off my second knee surgery that I had uh, maybe three years ago. So it was my second microfracture on the other knee. So I've been uh, pretty misfortunate in that area, but at the same time, it's, uh, I mean, everything happens for a reason. And I've definitely um, came back and uh, been able to play because there's been a lot of players in the past that haven't been able to come off that type of surgery maybe twice and been able to play again. So... I mean, it's a blessing itself to be able to come back and come back even stronger, be able, be able to play after those type of surgeries. Yeah, and with that surgery, I mean, have you kind of changed your game up, going from more of a guard in college now to a forward? How has that changed your game, or is that just maturity in, in, in basketball? Or uh, No, I wouldn't say uh, change my game. I think uh, coming off that type of injury, you kind of lose your athleticism, you know, for, for a while because, uh, you know, the, the 
type of surgeon you have, you lose all that muscle in that quad. So uh, it takes a while for you to build that muscle back in the quad and to get that explosion back. And that's what I was kind of dealing with, um, not last season, but the season before last when I was playing in France. And um, I was able to get a chance to play with Tony Parker and, and uh, Ronnie Turry off in France. So it was, that year was frustrating because I was really coming off my knee surgery. Tony knew it because he, he was the one that asked me to come play for his team. And they said, you know, take as much time as you need. But at the same time, once that deadline came, you know, I was kind of thrown in the fire, man. I still wasn't ready. I probably should have said, you know, declined his offer. But I really didn't want to say no to, you know, Tony Parker. So I kind of took it. But uh, I should have just said, you know, no, I need more time. And just to get my legs stronger. And that season wasn't really a strong season because I, my leg wasn't as strong. But last season I was able to come back strong and, um, and, and play even better, but as far as my position, uh, no, I kind of play, I've been playing, just floating around all my all my career pretty much. I, in high school, uh, wearing my Redondo shirt, uh, state champions last season. But uh, I, I started off there playing point guard position, and um, that's that's how I was really drafted to UCLA. Steve Lavin uh, was scouting, actually scouting one of my teammates, and seeing me playing uh, six three, six four point guard, and you know that's it just kind of took off from there. So. Um, playing point guard in, in, in high school and going to UCLA, playing the two, three, and finishing my college career at the four. I mean, I've pretty much done it all. And uh, in Europe, I've pretty much played the three position and mm -hmm. um, in, in certain situations, being my height and uh, being able to shoot the ball. They put me at the four sometimes just because I can pass and, and very uh, knowledgeable of the game, basketball IQ. So. I can pretty much uh, offset the other defenders and uh, the other team. So I could do it all pretty much. So uh, that's I really haven't had to change my game, just just pretty much learning new things and new positions, really. And then you said uh, you started off as kind of a point guard and went to shooting guard, small forward, things like that. So growing up, uh, who were some influences or, or, I mean, who did you kind of idolize, you know, basketball-wise uh, or mold your game after? Yeah, um, I always grew up a Jordan fan, so... Um, you know, just just growing up watching him, and along with Jordan, I was you know able to watch Scottie Pippen, and he kind of grew on me, as, you know, as far as with the defensive end, and and um, I just remember one one high school game, um, Michael Cooper was there watching, and you know, just going back in my in my basketball databank, you know, him being a defender, and he just said, you know, just 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 get stronger and uh, just work on that defense, and ever since then, you know, the Pippen kind of locked in, and you know, being my my height, and my length. Um, I kind of start picking up the defensive end and start getting a lot better at that, and um, just uh, just took it from there. I mean, offensively, it's, I've I've always been blessed enough to have the you know the talent to, to be able to shoot the ball a lot and uh, and be able to score in different ways. But um, I, I think I've gotten a lot better defensively and um, just uh, just being able to, uh, and it's shown uh, in a couple of years in the European League. Also, if I can ask you a couple NBA questions, uh, do you, do you, I mean, do you get to watch the NBA at all uh, over, while you're over in Europe or overseas? Or? Yeah, I, I catch a couple games, uh, depending on how late I stay up or how late I want to stay up. Yeah. Because, you know, the time difference is a little crazy, but I, I definitely catch uh, a lot of games uh, on the internet, through internet sites and, you know, just different things. But, uh, I mean, it's, <laughs> the game is changing. Yeah. Uh, you know, it's, it's kind of fun to see uh, up and uh, up and coming players like you know the Kevin Durant and uh, you know Russell Wood, uh, Russell Westbrook, uh, another UCLA guy. You know these guys starting to take over the game and and um, it's, it's exciting in a way. It's exciting and um, you know I look forward to you know I always wake up and you know check the Yahoo, go to Yahoo Sports and check what happened, check stats and mm -hmm. you know. YouTube, see what's going on top ten. So I, I kind of stay connected as much as I can when I'm over there. With the the NBA tie-in and then the UCLA tie-in, uh, did you get to watch Shabazz Muhammad at all, or, or what do you think about his game translating to the NBA? Well, unfortunately, um, last season I was here uh, when UCLA uh, reopened the gym, their first game there, so I was able to go to that. And, but Shabazz wasn't playing, of course, because of the you know the, the allegations or whatever. But I caught a couple games. Uh, couldn't catch too many, but I caught a couple games that he played. Uh, he's going to be good. He, he works hard. He's a, a left-hander, which you know is 
it's a, a very unique player and rare players. You know, left-handed, they, they have a unique games, but he's, he's going to be good. He has a good size uh, as far as his body, his length, and he works hard. And you can definitely tell that, and he has the you know the ambition to to really thrive. Especially, uh, I, don't, I don't think he he he, drew, he got drafted you know where he wanted. So I think he's going to feed off that and you know go from there and have a good season. And then you said you played with uh, Ronnie Turioff. He he yeah. is signed with the Wolves this offseason. What can we expect from him? Man, Ro, uh, Ro, Ro, man, he's, he's, oh yeah, you, you are in Minnesota, huh? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so yeah, uh, Terry off, man, he's, a lot of energy, man, he, he, man, he just loves the game, man, he, he, he just loves living, man, he, he brings a lot of energy and, uh, just happiness, man, he's always gonna be smiling, man, but I don't know how, how much he's gonna be smiling with that weather, man, I don't think he's used to that weather out there, but, um, he's gonna bring a lot of energy off the bench or starting, I don't know, you know, what the, the team has planned for him, but, He's gonna be an energy guy. Come off, come off the bench, rebound, set good picks, get get the guards open, and uh, just be a great teammate overall. So that's uh that's it about Roro, man. He's, he's just a good guy all the way around. All right, great. Thanks so much for your time. I'm Dejon Thompson, and you are now in my head.